There we go. All righty. Welcome back, everybody, to the fourth week, technically, of all of our summer technology programs here at the Schomburg Library. Tech Bytes, we got going on summer programs. But today is going to be the third week of our web development bell day program, where we are tackling new problems with the programming language of JavaScript. It is a week behind because we started a day after, but it's all good. We're going to build our JavaScript skills and learn how to tackle more uh, and better problems each and every day. So as always, guys, thank you so much for coming out here today. And without any further ado, let's get started. You guys know who we are by now. My name is Grant you guys. Uh, about a month and a couple of days ago, graduated from Conan High School, where some of you guys will be going. And now this upcoming fall in 2021, I'll be going to the University of Illinois at Chicago, planning to major in computer science. And my name is Love D. Jane. Um, I just graduated from Conant High School, uh, just like Rayon, a, couple, uh, a month and a couple of days ago. And I will be going to the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign to study the same amazing subject, computer science. And hopefully we are sort of shifting or creating that idea for some of you guys to start thinking about the future. And don't worry about college yet. No, don't do that. But just think about what you want to do in the future. It could be. CS related. So you guys know how to get started. We're going to get started off today with a couple of questions you guys have been asking for the past week about our July schedule. Make sure we're all updated about some shifts which will be happening with that. Then moving on towards our would you rather of the day. It's the web development bell day special and then capping it off with our problem of the day. So first things first, a little housekeeping about our upcoming month of July. All right. So um, before, okay. All right. So um, the days that we have canceled tech bites uh, and moved it to August to the first two weeks of August are from the 15th. Um, yeah, 15th and 18th to the 25th. And um, if you, some of you did ask a uh, some questions, I think last week and um, this happened because both me and Rayon's schedule con conflicted with the Tech Byte schedule and we'll be out of town and it, it happened so suddenly. But um, don't worry, we will be taking the sessions just two weeks later instead of uh, finishing everything in July. So you get to see us um, in August too. Yay. <laughs> yep. So we have a gaming hour on July 15th, but that's going to be canceled, guys. And then our web development bell day, two of those. Yeah two MIT app inventors and two product developments. All of those will be shifted to the first two weeks of August. So uh, the second week of August will be our final week of Tech Bytes in the summer and potentially with me and Lobby. So that will be coming up, but just know that you guys probably, I think have received an email by now by the library if you're signed up, that these two weeks, they're canceled for the final two weeks of July, but they have been shifted to the first two weeks of August. So just a little Shift in there. If you guys have any questions, do let us know or post in the Google Classroom. We'll let you guys know, but we'll post a reminder there as well. So none of you guys are waiting in the waiting room. But just remember, these final two weeks, you guys could take a mini break like us and we'll come back at the beginning of August. Yeah. All right. And I believe we did have some new people coming on here, which is always great to see. And by now, I believe on the list, I do see the new names have joined. If you have not, guys, the link to join the Google Classroom is in the chat once again. You should join so you can get access to all of our materials, resources, code links, and our video links as well. All right. And oh, why am I annotating? All right. So today's uh, would you rather question, something that all of you guys have been waiting for, I know. But would you rather have the ability to see 10 minutes into the future, so 10 minutes from now, or see 10 years into the future? Why? Um, 10 minutes or why 10 years? You got to give an explanation. Chase going 10 minutes. I'm each 10 years. Let's hear Chase. Why do you think 10 minutes? Why not? I'm mean, saying 10 minutes is a waste of time. What if nothing happens? That is true. Like nothing, nothing new happens. I mean, you could... Like if you want ten, ten, 10 years into the future, like you might be like scared or something like how you're going to turn out when you get older. Go on saying 10 minutes because I can keep on going to the future. That would take a lot of time. Keep on going 10 minutes forward and forward. Lottery tickets. <laughs> 10 years. 
Now think about if your future is good. I mean, personally, I would want to see myself 10 years in the future, knowing if my future is good. But what happens if you know your future will be bad? Like you're going to lose like some property or something. Would you still want to see 10 years in the future? Now it's the best time to change it. <laughs> I think it's a question of 10 minutes is a bit more, I don't know, applicable. Like you can, like if something's about to happen, like a conversation or some decision, like very near, you can just go ahead and see. Or 10 years, that's a long time. Well, if you see 10 years in the future, couldn't that also mean that you would also see 10 minutes into the future as well, just to see how you turned out? and all because then you would if something else happened to you like that changed your life you and ruined it then and it only happened 10 years in our uh, future and all then you could change it there and still have both best of both worlds true so what if it was just 10 years and you don't find out what happened in the past you just get fast forward to 10 years oh speaking of this there's actually a really good show on netflix called manifest i've been watching it's similar to this idea. These guys go on a plane and they're stuck on the plane for five years. But when they get back, they haven't aged a bit. That's pretty, it's like mm. similar to this idea. So that's funny. But yeah, so what if Chase, it was 10 years and you can't see what happened in the past. You're just placed 10 years in the future. Peter's saying, we do not need to figure out 10 years in the future at this moment. Okay, fair enough. Chase needs to see 10 years in the future. Well, what you guys could do, you know, if you go 10 years in the future, look at the latest piece of technology and develop it first when you guys come back. That, no, that's smart. <laughs> that's the idea. So if, if I were to go with the 10 years option, that's what I would do, I think. We would assemble, tech bikes assemble. Well, you, well, uh, if you were allowed to, you could also just snag a piece of technology and then come back and say you invented it and sell it. <laughs> it was me. It was us. That would be pretty funny. Alrighty, well, that concludes today's Would You Rather. Looks like we got an even pretty even split of people who want to go in the future, 10 minutes or 10 years in the future. Paritosh, want to share too? No. Alrighty. Well, now let's move on towards this week's problem as we're continuing to develop our JavaScript skills. Last week, we started off a simpler problem, which we covered in the first week, cut it out the solution. And this week, we're going to keep on continuing to build our skill set. The problem for this week is to create a program which will allow us to convert any temperature which we input in Celsius degrees to a Fahrenheit degrees. So, for example, 60 degrees Celsius is 140, about 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, today is a bit more special because we're going to be putting in some math, combining math with computer science as well. And it's gonna require us to use some formulas to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit. As you guys can see, there is a formula right there to convert from Celsius to Fahrenheit. We're gonna do nine fifths times the temperature which we input in Celsius and then adding 32 towards the end. So that's gonna be the format for today. And we're gonna be utilizing some HTML as well. And we'll be talking more about what will be required. Yep, all right. So the things that we do need to solve this problem First of all, variables. Variables should be um, kind of a given by now because every time we do work with any value that we want to either change, hold, or uh, perform a task on, we need variables. So this time, today, we'll need variables to hold our temperature, so our initial uh, Celsius temperature, and then the Fahrenheit temperature that we do uh, change that Celsius temperature into using our math. Second thing is functions. Functions will be used to hold all of the code that represent the math operation. So the nine fifth times the Celsius temperature plus 32, uh, that will all happen inside the function. And then finally, the HTML is again, the blocks of code that help you code um, whatever you want to put on the screen, like buttons, paragraphs, text, um, images and like all of, like cool media is also things that you can put using HTML, but, but we won't be using that today. Today will be just a user input and a button and a text. Yep, so just a quick overview. We've covered these in the past couple of weeks. Remember, variables, pretty simple, just a bit different than Python. We just add the word var 
before the name of our variable and set it equal to whatever we want. Today, we'll be using it as a container for our Celsius, whatever the user inputs, and then converting it to Fahrenheit as well. Yep. And functions. In JavaScript, the way we define functions is Okay, there we go. Um, can you guys see my screen though? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, Ryan, I'll just continue sharing my screen okay. and then. My Wi Fi guess lagged out. Okay, all right. We're good. Okay, so uh, what we were talking about, um, uh, there, just a quick pop quiz, one question for those of you who got, uh, know Python, who were either in our previous sessions or just know Python as a language. In JavaScript, we use the uh, word function def to define the function, but what word or what letters do we use to define a function in Python? B. Yeah, perfect. Great, Avnish. Um, you know Python, level one. Great job. And so in Python, you just do def uh, function name and then same thing, parentheses, put parameters inside those parentheses, like param one, param two. And then instead of braces, you just put a colon. So yeah, there's a little review of Python for you guys, but let's go on. And then of course, you guys, we have our HTML. Today we're gonna to utilize some more HTML in terms of a text field and a button where the user can put in a number for how many degrees they want converted to Fahrenheit. So the input will be initially Celsius and then we're gonna be responsible for converting that to uh, Fahrenheit. So just what we'll need, buttons, text fields, and a paragraph element to display some text. All right, so let's go on to the whiteboard and try converting from Celsius to Fahrenheit and the other way around using math, like just solving problems. So we know when we do code uh, using JavaScript, what the, the ID or what JS Fiddle will be doing. All right, let me share my whiteboard. Okay, cool. You guys can see my whiteboard, correct? Yep. All right. Nice. So um, we might need a calculator in this case, um, but let's start with simple numbers and then we can go on with harder numbers just to give you guys a challenge and maybe do a competition. So um, let's start. Um, I will put down the formula. So Fahrenheit is equal to, oh, that's pink. Okay. Um, nine over five. So nine fifths times the Celsius temperature and then plus 32, that's it, simple. And then if we want to convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius, uh, we just do the opposite. So Celsius is equal to in parentheses, Fahrenheit minus 32 and then times five over nine. All right, so simple equations, um, not too much of um, math, critical thinking, but uh, let's do some problems together. All right, let me change my color to blue. All right, so if we start with zero degrees Fahrenheit, or uh, zero degrees Celsius, that, what will that turn out to? So in this case, since we start with Celsius, we use the first equation because we want to find out the Fahrenheit. So actually let's do the first problem together. So in place of C over here, I will put in, let me use a draw. All right. So in place of C, I will put in, so nine, oh, very, okay. Let me add, okay, so, so nine, over five times zero, what will that be guys? Plus 32. 32. Okay, we got a 32 
and that is correct. Um, don't mind my amazing writing, but yeah. So we got a 32 as 32 degrees Fahrenheit from zero degrees Celsius. Now let's uh, up a notch to a little bit of a harder problem. We'll stick with starting with degrees Celsius, but let's take 20 degrees Celsius. So what will 20 degrees Celsius turn into? Again, it goes the same way as what we did before. And let's, oh, that's not what I want. All right. So it's time for I you guys to fix. Whoa, whoa, okay. Uh, can you repeat that, Amish? 93, 6, 10, 6.6. 6. Okay, 93. 93. All right, let me check. Can someone check that for me? Straight off, I think, Amish. Yeah? All right. Um, actually, you know what? Let me go to. Let's get my calculator going. It's 98. That's what I got. 98.6? No, I just got 98. 98. OK, let's check. So what we're going to do is multiply 9 fifths, uh, 9 divided by 5. Very nice. Um, Nine fifths. Oh no, I got it wrong. I didn't do PEMDAS. Exactly. Yep. Oh man, that's that's it's sixty-eight. It's sixty is sixty something. Yep. Sixty-eight. Sixty okay. I mean I'm having some technical difficulties with my cursor for some reason. Give me a sec. Technical difficulties. <laughs> So nine divided by five. So a, a cool way to solve these problems is knowing that, um, I'll just put them over here. So nine over five is a static value. And that's, um, let me just put that away right here. Nine over five will be 1.8. And we can just, um, instead of doing nine over five every time, we can just multiply uh, whatever our value for C is with 1.8. And then same goes for five over nine. Uh, all right, so five over nine, is equal to, let me do that. Technical difficulties again, but five or nine is 0.5 repeating. You guys know what that means. All right, so, um, oh, I should have known that for some reason, okay. But yeah, so um, now that we simplified our kind of formula, instead of multiplying by nine over five every time, we just multiply C by 1.8 and let's, uh, do the 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, let's multiply that by 1.8 and 20 times 1.8. And you guys can't see that, but just imagine a calculator um, and type in whatever I'm saying. So 20 times 1.8 and that's 36. And you just add 32 to that. And that is 68. Is that what everyone got? Yes, cool. All right, so that's 68. Now, um, for some of you guys, this might be really easy, but for some of you guys, this might be the first time you guys are seeing this formula. Um, can I get a vote? Um, have, you, have you guys been exposed to this formula before? Because I don't hear many um, like answers. Who, okay, Paritosh has anyone else? If it's you're not, it's completely fine. Sorry, Avanish, I cut you off. Put it in the chat. Um, it's, you know, it's not something you guys got to know. It's like, you know, nobody's going to ask you on the street, hey, convert this to <laughs> Fahrenheit, but it's... Uh... Yeah, even if, even if you don't, um, just think, imagine this as simple algebra. You just multiply 1.8 times your Celsius value and add 32. Now, um, I guess I can ask you guys, do you guys want to do a challenge round where I, we start with a Celsius temperature and we see who goes, who does it yes. who converts us the fastest? Okay, Avanish, I know you do, but anyone else? 
Okay, we'll do a couple for Avanish then. How's that? All right, so let's get my text going. I don't know, this whiteboard thing, it just always takes me off guard. Okay, so let's start with a medium number. Um, 62 degrees Celsius. And you gotta type your answer in the chat, so. Ah, yeah. One forty three point six is the first answer. Let's see. Let's do that. So sixty two times one point eight. That is plus thirty two. Yes, Avanish, you are correct. One forty three point six point goes to Avanish. Yay! Anyone else trying this? Degrees Fahrenheit. No problem. Um. All right, no, okay, we got this. Uh, how about the next one we do a little bit more challenging? 156 degrees Fahrenheit. And you got to convert it to Celsius. Okay, Paritosh, okay, let me, let me check if that's right. Yep, I think pretty much. Well, he has to be specific. It's technically 68 something, 899999. That's basically it. I mean, he said around 69. So I'm going to give the point to Paritosh. But um, you are correct too, Avanish. Um, if, we, if we asked for an exact answer, it would be 69.899 or whatever. Okay, don't freak out, Avanish. Let's do a final round. Let's see who wins that. And for this one, let's see, so around 69, that's what our answer was. And final one, let's see, 256 degrees Celsius. Four hundred ninety-two point eight Fahrenheit. I was gonna say right. that. Ooh, let me check that, so. I was going to say that literally, but I mean, <laughs> Are you said it first. Yep. Okay. So 256. Is he using a calculator? 1.8. 2 plus 32. 32. Yep. 492.8. That is the correct answer. And yes, um, Gorunch, that is correct. Um, great job. All right, so we, now we know that we as mathematicians can solve this problem, but let's see if we can code in JavaScript and HTML to have the computer give this answer for us so we don't have to do the math. Because um, as much as we need to use math in computer science, computer scientists usually use code to um, do math problems that they don't want to do themselves. Exactly. So let's make our lives easier, guys. Let's move on towards our coding website of JS Fiddle. The link to join is in the chat. If you guys want to hop on towards my team fiddle. All righty. Great to see everybody coming on in. All right. So first things first, like we were talking about earlier, let's get the structure of our website sorted out with. Like we said, we're gonna have a text field and then a button which the user can click in order to tell them what their um, Celsius temperature is in Fahrenheit. So first things first, I'm gonna create a text field. So I'm gonna do, the, as always, the gradient sign, the input is gonna be the type, the property which we're gonna access is gonna be a text property. This will allow us to create a text field. And as always, we like to give all of our HTML elements a ID. So I'm going to give this an ID and said, hey, this is going to be the number input. 
and then cap it off with the other. Greater than sign, we'll hit the run. We'll see that we have a text field popping on out. This is a text field because we can actually click, we can type numbers, letters, whatever we'd like in here. So this will be the area where the user can click, type in their degrees in Celsius and then have that convert to Fahrenheit. Now we got to create a button which the user can click, which allows them to convert the Celsius temperature to Fahrenheit. So remember, it's the same thing, the grand design and the word button. We're gonna have to give our button ID. I'll say this, this will be the uh, button one, because we're not gonna have that many buttons, only one button for today. And then there's usually one more thing associated with all of our, uh, all of our buttons. Yeah, probably I'll put the link so you can join once more. There you go. So who remembers the one thing which we need to connect our button to a function? Yep, Chase, exactly. So we have to say that on the click of our button, we're going to call a function. So we have, I'll call this function uh, convert degrees. We'll eventually type that out. Don't forget the opening close parentheses to show that this is a function. And then add the last grade and sign. Then we can add some text. We can say uh, convert temperature. So if I hit run now, there we go. We have a text field and then the button, which we will click eventually link to a function called convert degrees and they will convert our temperature. Now, one last thing which we need is a paragraph tag, which we can edit in order to show the converted degrees. So it's remember the grand sign, we got the P for paragraph tag and then an ID, which will say uh, display for now and cap it off with the other grand sign. There we go. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves guys with all those clicky clicks. This isn't a click bot or the click game where you gotta click as many times as you can. We should make that a game. <laughs> that would be fun. Also, it looks like on the side, you can actually have like a call through this because you, because like it has the mic option and all. So, yep, yep. Um, what is like that um, grew less than an NP exactly for again? So, this will be um, Avanish when we change the text. So, at the bottom right here, we'll say the degrees is in Fahrenheit as a number. Okay. Yep. So, we'll see how that comes into play. So how about we create that function, which is called convert degrees or whatever you called it in your on click. Add the opening close parentheses and then remember this is JavaScript. So we're going to add the braces and be sure to tab on in. Now we got our function, but we have to first of all, get the user's input, whatever number they input in the text field, right? So the way we're going to do that is probably going to have to store that somewhere. So what, where can we store the user's input? What would be a smart idea? What concept? All right. So in array, definitely if we have multiple entries, what if we only have one for today? It's the basic concept of all of our programming skills. We use it a bunch. Variable. Exactly. Yep. So I'll say var um, user input set equal to. And then what we're going to do is get the user's input. So remember, this is where the long line of code comes in because we're accessing a user element. So I'm gonna say document dot get capital E element, capital B by capital I ID, document dot get element by ID. So which ID are we referring to? That's gonna be the number input ID because that corresponds towards our text field. So the number input. So remember this initial line of code is just me referring towards our HTML element, in this case, the text field. Now for me to access anything about this element, I have to do dot, uh, it could be a bunch of different things. For today, it's just gonna be dot the value of whatever is inside of the text field. All right, so now we're getting the user's input. So what I'm gonna do just to test out is say, just alert the user's input and we'll see if that's working. So I'll hit run, we'll put the number 50 in, hit convert, there we go. We see the number 50 popping up. If I change it, 51, we see our number is changing. So we're correctly getting the user's input. 
Wait, what did you do again to like test it out? I just alerted Avanish. You could console.log or alert the user input just to see if the variable is holding the right value. Oh, okay. Because I click, because I put like alert in um, input and nothing happened. Uh, make sure that you are this whole line of line, this whole line of code is typed out correctly. It's in the chat if you want to take a look at how it's typed out as well. Oh yeah, it is. And I did it to my like like my way, like how I how I created like the variable and function. All right. Uh, I just click. I just click. You click run, right? Yep. And then what do you do? Uh, you can just type in your number, your D Celsius, and they convert to degrees. Make sure I the spelling is right because I'm I'm probably assuming some spelling might be off somewhere. Check your function name in the on click and your variable names and also the ID name. Those three are the three things that probably you're missing it up. Okay. So now that we got the user's input, remember this is initially going to be in Celsius, right? So we have to convert this to Fahrenheit. So the way we do that, remember our formula, we got right here, nine fifths times whatever value the user inputs plus 32. So I'm gonna create a new variable now to hold this conversion. So we'll say var um, temp Fahrenheit. Set so equal to, so now we'll do some math. So like Lavi was talking about, we can either do nine fifths or sort of avoid the PEMDAS situation and just do the static value, which is nine fifths, mm -hmm. AKA is 1.8. So that's gonna be an easier option to type out as well. What I'm gonna do is just say 1.8 times the user's input. And if you'd like, we can even put this in parentheses to make sure that we're doing the multiplication first and then adding the value of 32 at the end. So that's pretty much it. This is the nine fifths times the degrees in Celsius plus 32. And this should get us the final degrees in Fahrenheit. So let's test it out. For now, I'm just gonna alert the Fahrenheit temperature. So if I go ahead and enter 60, we get 140, just like we said. Remember, we had an example of 60 degrees Celsius is 140 degrees Fahrenheit. And if I do 60 degrees Celsius, we get 140 degrees Fahrenheit, which means our conversion is happening correctly. And does anybody have any questions? Anything which doesn't make sense to this moment? Still, still it is not working. I have a few questions. Um, so, uh, uh, how, can you explain how this um, uh, website works? Because this is my first time uh, using this website. Yep. So, Peter, we have when we're doing with JavaScript. Remember, we have three files. We have HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. The HTML is responsible for the structure of our website, like the buttons, the text fields, the CSS. We're not going to get into that for today, but that's used for making our website look nice, for styling. And then the JavaScript is where all the actual logic is happening, like we're seeing today, the logic of converting the Celsius to Fahrenheit. Now, today we're coding in HTML and JavaScript and just typing out the code. Do you have any questions about that? No. Well, actually, yes. Uh, so for uh, the input, so can you explain how that input works? Yeah, so the user first has a, we made a text field element in our HTML, the structure, right? We give it an ID so that we can refer to that HTML element. Now, the JavaScript is what allows us to get the user's input. The HTML is just for the show. The JavaScript is all the behind the scenes work. This line of code right here, line number three, this is getting the user's input from the text field. Notice how I'm referring to the text field with the ID called number input. Number input is also the ID of our text field. And then just getting the dot value, that's a property to get the user's input. Okay. Any other questions? Anybody else have any questions? Avanish, if you can put your code link in the, in the chat, um, we can take a look yeah. for you. Okay. Just put it. 
Yeah, I got it. Thank you. So, um, Avanish, the only error that I see is in line two. You said document dot get element by ID, but the G for the get is not uppercase. It's supposed to be lowercase. Oh, okay. Let me try it now. Let's be careful, guys. It is a bit of a long line of code, and making sure that your uppercase and lowercase they do matter. So make sure that it's all good. Yep. That's the one thing about coding and coding syntax. Um, when you're starting to learn about it, the uppercase and lowercase really um, gives us a hard time. But once you get a hang of it, um, it shouldn't be that much big of a deal. All right. So now that we've actually been able to do the conversion, all we have to do now is display it in our paragraph tag. So up here, this is another element in our HTML. And we're going to use this element to display right here the text instead of just alerting it and make it look nice, actually. So here we go once again with the long line of code. We're going to do a reference towards our paragraph tag. So I'm going to say document dot get capital E element, capital D by capital ID, document dot get element by ID, referring to now the display HTML element. And instead of doing dot value, I'm going to do now dot inner HTML. And this is where now where we can set it equal to whatever we would like it to say. So we can say the converted temperature to Fahrenheit degrees is. So that's the text portion. And then to add our variable towards the end, we do plus and then the name of our variable called temp Fahrenheit. So now if I hit run, we go ahead and enter 60 degrees Celsius. We want to convert that to Fahrenheit, hit convert. There we go. We see actual text popping up on our website area towards the bottom right. The convert temperature to Fahrenheit degrees is 140. And that is made possible because of this idea of referring to our HTML, making the reference towards the display tag, and then changing the HTML to display certain text stuff like that. What if we can, like, the next step is, like, after you did var, like, you put the formula 1.8, you also include it for the other way, I think, Fahrenheit to Celsius? Yeah, so we can definitely do that right now, too. So we got some time. So if we want to do the same thing, this one involved a pretty similar idea. What I would probably do is create a new button right now, button number two. You can copy and paste the same code for the button. I'm just going to change a couple of properties. Oh. So we'll say the ID is going to be button to convert temperature to Celsius. And then we'll do convert temperature to Fahrenheit. And then we'll create a new function. We'll call it convert degrees to. If I hit run, there we go. We can see two buttons are popping up. Now what we're going to have to do is create a new function to convert to uh, Celsius, right? So what I'm going to do is we can literally copy and paste this whole function. Adding a comment so that we know what our code does. So this new function is going to be responsible for converting to Celsius. We called it convert degrees to. Now the first line of code will still be the same, guys, because we're still getting the user's input from the text field, whatever number they input in. But the one thing which is going to change now is we're not going to Fahrenheit. We're now going to Celsius, the temperature in Celsius. And the formula is a bit different. So if we go back to convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius, we're going to have to do 5 ninths times the Fahrenheit minus 32. So 5 divided by 9 is repeating right? So 0.55. OK, so let's go 0.55 an approximate for now, times Fahrenheit minus 32. To change some of this math, we're going to do 0.55 times the user's input minus 32. Oh, OK. So I guess we'll just enter the actual fraction for now. So let's do 5 ninths times user input minus 32.
And now we have to change some of the text we're displaying, right? The converted temperature to Celsius degrees is the temperature Celsius variable, which is holding the converted temperature. Now that was pretty fast. We just uh, went through for the second function. Does that make sense? We were able to copy and paste and just manipulate a little bit of our code because we already had most of it already written out for degrees. But we could apply the same logic towards converting to Fahrenheit by changing the math formula, the variable name, but still getting the user's input. That all stays the same. So let's test it out. So if I go 140 degrees Fahr uh, Celsius to Fahrenheit, we get it's 60. Right, makes sense. 60 degrees Celsius is 140 Fahrenheit. 140 Fahrenheit, therefore, has to be 60 degrees Celsius. Does anybody have any questions at all about anything we've covered today? Yes, Pratosh, I'll take a look at it. So now you guys won't have to uh, calculate the conversion between Fahrenheit and Celsius on your own. You have uh, your own code to do it. How cool is that? That, and that's the idea. With code, it's meant to make our lives easier. And you hopefully guys are starting to see that you can just simply type out whatever you like and make it do some of the work for you. So as a lot of you going over uh, the code for today, just a quick example, um, quick recap of the elements we covered today, the concepts. We talked about our HTML elements like text fields, buttons, a paragraph ID to display some text, and then the actual JavaScript handling all the logic to convert to Fahrenheit and Celsius using the mathematical formulas, combining some math today, and then using some references to the HTML to display some text like we got going on right here. As always, guys, this link will be available in the Google Classroom today with our recorded video link as well. If you guys want to go back, look at anything, if you guys have any code mishaps, that is all good to check out. Uh, Parithosh, is your uh, code not running? It's not running. It says that I have a problem with my uh, convert degree. It says that it's not defined. Let's see. Uh, convert. So convert. Oh. oh. Oh, yeah. So spelling, remember? Uh, convert degrees, letter uh, N. <laughs> oh. Should be good now. So you could also make this a part of the game. Like there's some item in it that you can use to convert them or something. Like, oh, right. That's, are we doing, that's actually next. Well, for the one of the other programs. Yeah, for product development. Yeah. I always get uh, them confused. <laughs> all good. All right, guys. Well, that brings us till the end for this the third session of our web development bell day. Hopefully you guys are enjoying these tackling new problems. Errors are part of the game, guys. We love having them and we're gonna get through them like we all do. It could be spelling errors, it could be logic errors. It is not a problem. Then we apply our skills of debugging. It's a method which we, it's better to get used to early because perfection is just not possible or you can try to guess perfect as you want. Debugging will always be a part of the game. As always guys, thank you so much for coming out here today. And remember, we got MIT App Inventor tomorrow and then web project development on Wednesday. Catch you guys then. See you guys. Bye. 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 Thank you, Ms. Class. Bye. See you Bye. tomorrow.